Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing a movie review this week. And, since we're in December, I decided to do another Christmas movie review. Which came out on November 9th, 2007. It's the Christmas comedy, Fred Claus. With Vince Vaughn as Fred Claus. And Paul Giamatti as Santa Claus. Yep, it's a film about what was it like if Santa Claus actually had a brother. But he gets all the attention, his brother doesn't. So it's like a direct opposite of each other, an act of sibling rivalry. Now, I consider this movie to be criminally underrated because when this movie came out, it got negative reviews from critics. Yeah, again, I don't always agree with critics sometimes. It did alright at the box office, so it's sort of like a uh, a modest hit, but not particularly, because it actually had a hundred million dollar budget for this film. Yeah, this this was a huge budget for this film alone, because of the the setting and everything that went into it. Yeah, special effects too. It only made like 97.8 uh, million dollars uh, worldwide. So it, it almost quite make it, but not exactly huge. So it's not, so I guess it was just a, maybe just a tiny hit. But it's sad to say, but not many people talk about this movie, and I think it's a shame. It is on TV, so you can watch it. So. It's lucky that it did have a Blu-ray release that came out in 2008, and it, it is a, um, a free to set, and I'm going to try to be careful because, well, there's a problem with the case itself, I mean, part of the disc slider, but it actually has a, uh, a DVD uh, game included, it's a bonus disc. I think it has the movie inside along with the special features. Uh, sorry, hold on. Because this piece got broken off. Uh, shit, I hate this. Uh, I'm going to take it out. Um, yes, it has a DVD game. It has a digital copy, which is no longer used because it's already been expired. And the reason that's... Uh, <laughs> Not a reason to hate these. And, um, top of that, uh, hold on. Here's the Blu ray. Sorry. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, just having trouble putting this away. Uh, but what can you do? This needs to be fixed. At least it has a, uh, but at least it's a, um, a sturdy uh, Blu-ray case. Um. <laughs> okay. Well, what can you do? <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, it's a criminally underrated film. Not many people talk about it. Um. It's a, it's a shame, too, because this movie did actually have a heart to it. It actually had memorable scenes that I could think of. I'm going to get to it. and I mean, yeah, sure, Fred is, is very unlikable at times, but then he does change his ways when he was working with his brother. I guess it's just Vince Vaughn just playing himself. Cause he's always doing that fast talking and his deadpan delivery. That he does with all that humor and the fact that he's he's like a con artist this time and he's working as a repo man and everything so that sort of way um plus you also had a big cast to join in I mean not only do you got Vince Vaughn and Paul Giamatti but you got Miranda Richardson uh, John Michael Higgins because yeah, I know he worked together with Vince Vaughn Elizabeth Banks yes Yep, you know when she became very popular later on. 
Uh, Rachel Weiss, who just won an Oscar for the movie The Constant Gardener. But I know she's been around. She's been in several movies like Chain Reaction, uh, The Mummy movies, except for the third one, and uh, so on. <laughs> you got Kathy Bates. Yes, from Misery, The Water Boy, Titanic, uh, Dolores Claiborne, so on and so forth. And of course, Kevin Spacey. Yeah, before this whole situation happened. But he was always been in movies like The Usual Suspects, uh, Glenn Gary Glenn Ross, uh, American Beauty, many others. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this was um, another film that was uh, directed by David Dopkin, who's been known for previously directing. Uh, films like Shanghai Nights, yeah, with Owen Wilson and Jackie Chan, and also directed the movie Wedding Crashers, yeah, also with Vince Vaughn and and Owen Wilson. So it seems like a, a direct opposite here to to do a Christmas comedy. And I I always remember seeing the teaser trailer where it was just both Vince Vaughn and Paul Giamatti bickering with each other. Like, you know, they're just having fun, talking, you know, because they, they love to chat around. I, I think you could find that uh, on YouTube somewhere. But I, I always remember seeing that uh, when I went to see uh, Rocky Balboa in, in theaters, and that's where I saw the, the teaser trailer before they were, it was going to come out the following year, and then that's where everything went, went here and there. <laughs> so, okay. So, um, let's get to the review. It stars, once again, Vince Vaughn, Paul Giamatti, Rachel Weisz, Miranda Richardson, Kathy Bates, Trevor Peacock, Elizabeth Banks, uh, John Michael Higgins, Kevin Spacey, Bobby J. Thompson, Ludacris, yes, Ludacris, the, the rap artist. <laughs> There's going to be a funny moment right there, too, that I'm going to talk about. Ellen uh, Kohlner, with cameos of with Frank Stallone, Roger Clinton Jr., and Stephen Baldwin, yeah, playing themselves. And Jeffrey D. Morgan as a cameo. It's written by Dan Fugelman, yes, the same guy who wrote uh, films like Cars, Tangled, Bolts. Also went on to write TV shows like The Neighbors from 2012. Uh, has done a lot of stuff. Uh, with co-writer uh, Jesse Nelson. And it's directed by David Dopkin, who did Shanghai Nights and Wedding Crashers. The movie began set in an earlier time, where we meet the Claus family. That's when Mother Claus, who's played by Kathy Bates, now has a newborn child who turns out to be the brother of Frederick. And he named him Nicholas. Just after uh, his first words were ho 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 and, and the baby was becoming a little bit bigger than, than before. <laughs> so now Frederick has a brother and suddenly uh, Mother Claus just, just named the baby as Little Saint Nick, as a nickname. So during Christmas, uh, Nick opened his gifts, including Fred's, but suddenly Nick uh, decided to take all of his gifts, as well as his gifts, to the orphans. And that's what causes Fred to become very angry and jealous. So Mother Claus advised Fred to to be a better person, stating that he should be more like his brother. And that's where he just couldn't take it anymore. And he just wanted to make contact with someone who understands how Fred feels. So he actually uh, went up on top of the tree, you know, making contact with a bluebird. And uh, 
her nest house, but suddenly the tree has been cut down by Nicholas. Uh, so now the tree house has been destroyed. And, well, that's what leads to, to a rage with, against his brother. He actually threw a, a Granny Smith apple at Nicholas's head. And this is where, you know, he just wanted, he now feels all alone. And then Fred just suddenly changes. So now he becomes the direct opposite of his brother. Yeah. So in the present day, that's when the, the Claus family has frozen in time. So now they become immortal. Nick becomes a modern day Santa Claus, while Fred is now becoming a, uh, a con artist, as well as a repo man, who's a fast talker, living in Chicago, all alone. But he also has a girlfriend, who's a meter maid, named Wanda. And by the way, of course, uh, Fred Claus is played by Vince Vaughn. And, and Paul Giamatti plays Santa Claus. <laughs> and so Wanda is played by Rachel Weiss, who gets mad at him because uh, he forgot her birthday. So Fred decided to promise her with a surprise by going to a, a, a Japanese restaurant. Yeah, that didn't work out so well for the surprise. He also has a young orphan boy named Samuel Gibbons, his nickname is Slam, who was uh, played by Bobby J. Thompson. So he was just like sitting around watching uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas and just explaining about, about who Santa Claus really is and he just couldn't take it. Um, on top of that, yeah, he this was actually one of the funniest parts too in the movie and there are several others it, this is when um, he, he has to come up with um, he has to come up with a lot of money like fifty thousand dollars that he had to give so unfortunately in order way to get all the money he decided to um, disguise himself as um, as a charity uh, Santa or well, he's just wearing the Santa cap and he's just just trying to send out all the charity so he can get a lot of money inside uh, the bucket but then several uh, Santas from the Salvation Army had just jumped on him and started chasing him around all the way around it all the way into the mall yeah, where he went straight to Toys R Us <laughs> and he just knocks all of them down until he he got jumped over. <laughs> that was a pretty funny scene. So then he wants up in jail. So he agrees to call um, his brother, Santa, which is Nick, to actually agree with him to give him the bail money, but tells him that he wants $50,000 in cash. So unfortunately, the only way for him to do that was to go to the North Pole so he can work with him. And that's what he was doing. Also, uh, Nick was actually having problems of his own because um, he has an eating disorder. That's why he's, he's gaining weight. Uh, he's also married to uh, Mrs. Claus, who's played by Miranda Richardson. Just telling him to, to stop dealing with his eating habits and everything. He's also getting very nervous already. Especially the fact that he actually hired... Um, a, uh, an efficiency expert named Clyde Avonball Northcutt, who's played by Kevin Spacey. And yes, he's the antagonist of the film, yeah, the villain. So, um, soon after, just when uh, Slam is being taken over by the orphanage, uh, an elf named Willie, who's played by John uh, Michael Higgins, I came with Santa's sleigh and um, decided to take Fred to the North Pole you know, with all the, the reindeers to join in. Willie is the head elf and he actually has a crush on Santa's little helper named Charlene who's played by Elizabeth Banks. 
So once Fred and Willie arrive at the North Pole, Nick actually welcomes Fred and shows him around the entire uh, village, including uh, Santa's workshop. So he wanted him to do a job. Well, if you saw the deleted scenes uh, on the Blu-ray, uh, he was actually going to work on the candy canes, but yeah, that didn't work out so well. So he actually hired all the elves to, to do it for him. So his next job was just check out all the um, the profiles of all the kids around the world who are either naughty or nice. Yeah, there's even a naughty board where they just show you all the kids who does a lot of naughty things, or or, or even show. But I think there's also a board for nice too. But I don't think they didn't show it as much. But they also have a huge snow globe where you get to see all the kids around the world or anyone else. You get to ask everyone to see what was it like um, outside of the, the entire world. Yeah, and, and Fred actually looks uh, underneath the snow globe and that's when he spots uh, his girlfriend Wanda and just giving the, another worker a ticket and that happens to be uh, that happens to be Jeffrey D. Morgan playing the role of a, a worker who just just got a ticket and he's just ready to give um, Wanda a, a dinner invitation but but also even says that yes Wanda doesn't have a boyfriend so yeah she lies so you know, things were going pretty well for a while, but not exactly as much because because Nick has a deal with, with Clyde, and this is where Clyde suddenly uh, tries to give him several strikes while he was just looking around the entire uh, North Pole to see how everything's doing. As he came from helicopter too, just checking to see, yeah, you know, just just expecting the entire place to see how they're doing but if if he's not doing a good job then yes this is where he gets all these free strikes and that's where he gets the, the termination so he'll no longer be Santa Claus anymore and all the elves are going to be out of jobs everything's going to get a whole lot worse after that no presents for kids and anyone around so, we also meet uh, DJ Donnie, played by Ludacris, who just constantly plays the same song over and over as a request, just the song Here Comes Santa Claus. But Fred just couldn't take it anymore. He didn't want to hear that song over and over while just working on the, uh, the profiles of Naughty and Nice. Just had to stamp Nice or Naughty here and there. So he decided to make a change by actually changing the music to that other song. So he was like dancing around with all the elves, but, <laughs> well, that leads to problems. Nick also invited um, Mother Claus, uh, along with Father Claus, to, to stay over for, for a visit uh, inside, the, uh, inside one of the village house. So I guess... They decided to stay there on their own, so they decided to have dinner, but Fred just couldn't get along with them because of what happened a long time ago. Way back. So it leads to, to problems, so now um, Fred just dropped out and decided to just um, just go to a local bar and just, you know, just have a drink of eggnog. And actually he's trying to help out Willie. You know, just getting to know uh, Charlene, just uh, learning how to dance, and while they're playing that Rolling Stones song. But then uh, Willie accidentally just fell all the way down into the table, and that's when you know he spotted Charlene because Charlene forgot something. Yeah, he totally made a fool out of himself, but yeah. But afterwards, uh, Clyde suddenly uh, destroyed uh, all the Santa letters that the kids had sent them. So now claiming that Fred actually did all this. So Clyde actually lied to, to Nick about that. 
Um, Fred just couldn't take it anymore either because since he started to look at uh, Slam through the snow globe when he was in the orphanage and he started beating up everyone that he wants up at the number one of the naughty list so but Fred suddenly changes his ways and decided to just stamp in nice on all the naughty reports which causes Nick to be furious and this is where they had a snowball fight <laughs> And then, on top of that, yes, of course, Clyde terminated uh, Nick and the rest, so now they have to shut everything down, but, but now they have to fix everything. So Fred had decided to take over Nick uh, for his place to actually send out all the gifts, so he had to offer all the elves, with the help of Charlene, to actually build all the toys within 10 hours. For Christmas Eve, you know, with Fred just taking over, and of course, with Willie joining in to help to deliver all the gifts around the world. But things are not getting easy because Clyde was about to shut them down. Until, well, there's a secret behind Clyde where, yes, he was actually in a naughty list when he was a kid, and he stopped believing in Santa. But then all he wanted was, as we speak, a Superman cape. Kind of ironic though, because uh, Kevin Spacey did play Lux Lufor in Superman Returns. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so, for better or worse, you know, fans turn out for the best. Um, Fred and, and Willie finally sent out all the gifts, so now everything was going great. So then, by the next Christmas, you know, fans were getting even better than ever. I mean, already, um, with um, Slan now finally got a puppy that he always wanted, named Macaroni. And fans were getting along very well with the family, so there you go. So even the... Fred now finally has the, the gift, because uh, this was a, an apology to um, to Nick that he accidentally destroyed the treehouse. So now he actually saved the treehouse, so that way another the bluebird will come over and be able to be able to have babies uh, on the house. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to give away too much here. Um, but. It was a very funny movie, in my opinion. I, I liked it. I mean, it's not the greatest Christmas movie ever made, per se, but... I mean, but don't expect it much. It's it's what it is. One of the interesting moments in the movie was when Fred decided to go to a sibling anonymous, and that's where we see Roger Clinton Jr. You know, giving a speech about uh, his brother Bill Clinton, because he was president at the time but no longer, it's taken over by George W. Bush. And then we have uh, Frank Stallone talking about uh, his problems uh, with his brother Sly Stallone, yes, Sylvester Stallone, because he's making a lot of hits with Rocky and Rambo. <laughs> and then you get Stephen Baldwin you know, talking about his problems because his brother is becoming successful, yeah, Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Uh, yeah, th this yeah, this is where he gets so angry because <laughs> because Doctor uh, Goldfarb, played by Alan Cobinar, was just trying to calm him down, telling them, "You're not Alec. You're not Alec. You're not Alec." <laughs> just when um, Fred was was talking about his problems with with his brother uh, Nick Claus, yeah, Santa Claus. I guess the only flaw that this movie had, though, was that Fred was supposed to be the immortal, so it makes more sense, because then, apparently, yeah, Fred would have had changed a bit, he probably would have gotten a little older or, or, or so, but instead he's just himself, you know, just Vince Vaughn being who he is, so, but that's okay, I, I guess that's just how the film had to go.
But I also love the moment, too, where he was being chased down by ten Santas from the Salvation Army, chasing them all the way around the block, and, and they went straight to Toys R Us. And then, <laughs> and then Fred was just taking them all down, just when he already dropped the bucket, and then uh, just when he dropped the pail of all the, the money that's inside. Um, and then uh, he, he took out those two um, caution, uh, <laughs> all these uh, two uh, yellow uh, signs, you know, the, the caution wet floor and just knocks them completely, knocks them down and until all of them just jump on him until he got arrested. That, that was just funny. I, I, and of course, Ludacris says DJ Donnie, you know, just... Yeah, you know, playing all the hits. You know, he's doing all his dance moves and everything. <laughs> or and also, uh, Charlene was very cute. You know, very tall, blonde elf. Uh, which I can see why Will Willie is. Uh, you know, which I can see why uh, Willie was was falling in love with her because she's she's very attractive, very beautiful, sexy too. <laughs> Um, so it seems like, yeah, Willie's just not getting much attention these days sometimes, even though he's the uh, head elf. And I can see why Fred is trying to help him out. Um, but of course, um, Willie's also cool too, as the head elf. You know, Fred was about to sleep on, on the bunk bed, so <laughs> really gets the bottom. Yeah, Fred gets the top, and he's like huge. <laughs> Yeah, because the house is very smurfy. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I thought uh, Ben Spawn did a good job playing Fred Claus. And, yeah, I mean, he was unlikable at first. He's, he acted like a jerk. He forgets everything. And, you know, he's like stealing the money from the charity and all that. But deep down of it, he starts to change his ways later on. Because, I mean, the main reason why is because of the fact that he's under the competition of his brother Nick, yeah, it was Santa Claus, yeah, played by Paul Giamatti. And Paul Giamatti did a great job playing the role too. In fact, the way he portrayed Santa Claus really worked. I mean, I know we get a lot of actors portraying the role, but hey, he, he did a, a great Dead Ringer right there. Here. Um, Richard Rice was okay. Uh, nothing much to say about her character, Wanda. Under the fact that she's not not exactly a nothing wall, but but it's one of those characters where you know it's exactly what you expect. I mean, she's you know she's being left out, but always she's all right. So is Miranda Richardson as uh, as Mrs. Claus, who's Nick's wife, and yeah, her real name is Annette. Yeah. Nothing much for her character either. Uh, Kathy Bates was good, though, as Mother Claus, and Trevor Peacock as Father Claus, who, believe it or not, uh, was also the narrator of the film, too. And, of course, Kevin Spacey as Clyde. I mean, you wanted to hate the character at first. You really do. Because the way he acts, you know, dealing with the situation here, and the way he's shutting down... Christmas and he had to destroy all the Santa letters and everything, but deep down I mean, you kind of feel bad for him because You know he always wanted the Superman cape as a kid and that's why he wears those glasses Trying to make him look like Clark Kent in a way But he changes his ways too at the end, so that's good um, Yeah, and, and it has a lot of great music here, a great score by uh, Christoph Beck. Yeah, there's mostly Christmas music, like you got uh, the Jackson 5 with Santa Claus is Coming to Town, um, and all these other songs joining in. Uh, I love the art design of uh, the North Pole, it, it looks so beautiful, well done. They, they, it was all built by hand at a studio. Uh, Hard to believe. Um, they they took a lot of work to do that, but it definitely looks exactly like what North Pole is supposed to look like with all the villages, the Santa's workshop, everything. And 
the elves too. I mean, you got a lot of actors playing the elves. You also got uh, <laughs> the free uh, elves who are just going around attacking Fred all the time. <laughs> yeah, there was a scene where <laughs> the the free uh, tough elf teams are about to attack Fred. You know, when whenever Fred does something crazy, they do all these. Uh, ninja moves and all that and and they even tied him up too in, inside the the workplace just when there's they're about to bring him into the um, inside uh, Nick's office where yeah I brought in uh, Wanda and the rest of everyone even you know Mutter and Father Claus joined in trying to explain about you know Fred's problem and all that so that was funny yeah, I mean, for a nearly two-hour film, it's it's fun. I mean, I, I just don't understand the hate this movie gets. I guess, you know, people just expect it too much. So that's the problem. But I had fun. I liked it. I saw it in theaters. I, I had a fun time. So, there you go. So anyway, I give the movie Fred Claus three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.